Hi, in this video we're going to consider a couple of particular examples of symbol harmonic motion. Mass spring systems and pendulums. First, let's have a look at a mass spring system. Here we have a 100 gram mass hanging from a spring in its equilibrium position. If I displace the spring either up or down, it will begin simple harmonic motion. The green arrow represents the mass's velocity vector and the yellow arrow its acceleration vector. We can see that it obeys all of the behaviour we expect of simple harmonic motion. The acceleration is always towards the equilibrium and is proportional to the magnitude of the displacement. The velocity meanwhile is zero at either extreme and a maximum as it passes through the equilibrium position. But what happens to the oscillations if we change either the mass or the spring constant? First, let's turn the mass up to its maximum value. Note that the equilibrium position has moved down. This is because the spring will now have a greater extension due to the heavier mass. But what about the oscillations? With a heavier mass, the oscillations are much slower, suggesting that the time period is in some way proportional to the mass. How does the spring constant affect the time period? Let's increase the spring constant to its maximum value. Notice that the oscillations are now much faster, so the time period must be in some way inversely proportional to the spring constant. The actual relationship between these quantities is that the time period t for a mass spring system is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the square root of the mass divided by the spring constant. So what about pendulums? What affects the time period of a pendulum? When I displace this pendulum by 10 degrees, we get a period of 1.68 seconds. What will happen if I pull it back further from, say, 15 degrees? We get an almost identical time period, so the time period is not related to that initial displacement. Note that this is only true for small angles. If we use a much larger displacement, then the time period will increase. OK, let's try changing the mass instead. Let's use 1.5 kilograms instead of 1 kilogram and see what happens to the time period. Oh look, the increased mass has made no difference to the time period. It's 1.68 seconds again. Right, let's change the length of the pendulum this time from 0.7 metres to 1 metre. The time period has now increased to around 2 seconds. So that time period must be in some way proportional to the length of the pendulum. Finally, let's see what happens if we take our pendulum to Jupiter and swing it there. How will increasing the gravitational field strength affect our pendulum's time period? Well, you can see that the increased gravitational field strength has made our pendulum swing faster, so the time period has decreased. Therefore, the time period must in some way be inversely proportional to the gravitational field strength. The full relationship for a pendulum is that the time period t is equal to 2 pi, this time multiplied by the square root of the length of the pendulum, divided by the gravitational field strength. 